Hello everyone, this is hopefully a short video on how I modded my Atari 5200, the four port version, uh, using the console 5 power mod and also Brian's UAV uh, audio video mod. Okay, so uh, this is everything that I needed and I'll show you step by step what I did. But first of all, what I actually had to purchase were a couple of things. The console 5 power mod, the UAV chip, and I also bought the Atari 2600 uh, um, audio video mod just to use its nice uh, audio video uh, composite jacks. Okay. And I also bought a resistor pack from Amazon as well as uh, shrink tubing. Each one cost almost $10. So uh, what uh, I first did was obviously take out the, the cover and then take out the shielding. So the shielding is not so easy. So you have to take out the motherboard. And as you do that, be very careful. You will most probably break one of those uh, small plastic pin legs. Uh, they come out very, because it's so tight, it will most probably uh, break. So I broke one here, but the other one is still intact. Okay. So uh, th then you have to really uh, kind of uh, twist these metallic pieces here so that you can get the RF shield out. That actually took me quite a bit of time. Uh, but uh, once you get it open, you'll expose the motherboard and now we start to do the modding. So the first thing that I did was the power mod itself. And to do that, you have to take out the huge capacitor as well as this little red guy, which usually sits over here. So I took out the red capacitor. Okay, and then uh, we'll use the components that come with the console five kit. This is a new kit just to show you how it looks like. Um, you actually don't need everything in there. There are two resistors that are stuck together. I did not have to use them. What I did use were the following parts. Number one, the replacement capacitor. I put that uh, in, in this spot over here. Then there is a diode that I had to uh, connect to the same terminal here. And from that terminal to the red wire. And then the red wire goes to the power jack, which I had to solder it to, to the, uh, the middle part, the center part. right? And that actually was not so easy. <clears throat> and of course, uh, I also had to drill a hole here with my trusty uh, drill. Uh, be careful, start always with a small a drill bit and you know build your way up uh, until your size you, you you make it the right size uh, and then for the negative you basically uh, solder the black wire to the other end of the jack and then connect it directly to the same uh, terminal as the capacitor the negative terminal okay so that is the power mod once you do that you're actually gonna be able to test if it turns on or not. It will just show you whether the the LED is blink is uh, turns on or not. Okay, so that's the power. Uh, next comes the uh, video, right? Audio and video. So what I did is I took the UAV chip as is. I didn't have to change any of the jumpers. It was preset for the 5200 settings, and I inserted it just on top of the 4050 chip, as you see over here. I hope it's showing nicely. <clears throat> I didn't solder it here just for demonstration purposes, but technically to make this a cleaner install that won't move over time, I should do that. But anyway, uh, it actually works nicely like this. And then you have to do three things, uh, connect three things to it, three cables. And I used the, actual, the, the cables that came with the Atari 2600 uh, audio video uh, mod because they were actually nicer than the ones that came with the Brian's UAV chip. Okay, so three things that I connected to the UAV board. Number one, the uh, output from uh, resistor R17 to the first terminal here, color, uh, color in, and then two other cables coming out of it. Uh, well, the black one is ground, obviously, oh, and that's why I should probably solder it. <laughs> but the, the ground comes out of the UAV, and I pass it to the 
the ground terminals of all three jacks, as you see over here. Okay? And then I have the uh, color out, the yellow cable, that I connected to the yellow composite jack. Okay? Now let me show you how easy this is. I just have to make sure that I'm inserting this guy on top of the chip without too much pressure. And like I said, I will solder this later. There we go. Okay, so uh, at this point, you should be able to test it and see that video is working. What about audio? So this was actually tricky for me, at least. Uh, what I did is followed some instructions and connected to a resistor R50. And under this uh, uh, shrink tubing, there is a resistor over here. That's not really showing connected to a capacitor. This resistor is a 2.2K uh, ohm resistor. And then the capacitor, I forgot its specs, but I can, uh, I can list it out in the, in the comments section. Uh, and this is to make the audio not, uh, I mean, not so loud and not so distorted as far as I heard. I did not test it without, okay? So uh, now that we had have the resistor and then the, the, the capacitor connected, we connected the red cable uh, all the way to both jacks. Remember that this is a mono device. So, you know, technically I could have just installed three, two jacks instead of three. I forgot about that. I already had drilled three holes, so <laughs> no problems. Okay, so that is it. Uh, Things that I ended up taking out, of course, no need for the uh, the switch box anymore. I desoldered the RF cable, no need for that. The capacitor and this guy. And what else? I think that was it. Other tools that you needed, the drill, of course, a, a screwdriver, uh, probably... Uh, of course, your soldering kit with a, a decent amount of solder and something, whatever it is, so you can fasten and tighten the jacks, both power and audio. I think that's it. The last thing I had to do was, uh, obviously the UAV is a little bit uh, higher, but it's not higher than, than this guy over here, so the shielding doesn't have to be cut or modified in any way. However, this section here, of course, changed quite a bit. So uh, what I ended up doing is taking the RF shielding and there was this piece at, at, the, at the end that I actually ended up wiggling up and down until it came out. We don't need this guy anymore. That's it. So uh, I have my audio video connected here, just two cables, the yellow and the red. And I have my power connected. And all what I have to do to test this guy right now is press the power button. There we go. Nice quality, and let's test the audio. There we go. Not too loud. Great, actually. Unfortunately, there isn't a lot of documentation, that recent documentation, uh, on how to do this. these two mods, so hopefully this video helps you. Thank you, everyone.